A devastating earthquake measuring 8.9 has rocked northern Japan. It was 2.46pm on the 11th of March 2011 that an earthquake struck off the east coast of Japan measuring 9 on the Richter scale, making it one of the most powerful earthquakes on record. Shortly after, a tsunami advanced on the Miyako, Iwate and Tohoku prefectures, wiping out everything in its path with furious ocean water reaching up to 10 kilometres inland. 15,850 people were killed in the destruction, and vast residential areas were flattened, leaving as many as half a million people without homes. The earthquake also disrupted a nuclear power facility in Fukushima Prefecture, causing a meltdown that contaminated the surrounding area with radioactivity, with ongoing concerns and problems lasting much longer. And all of this happened the day after my sister and I arrived in Japan. So we went to Japan on the 10th of March, 2011. Um, we actually went to Osaka. So we stayed the night in Osaka, which was probably in retrospect a really good thing to have done because, um, yeah. Then again, what was to come was a bit harrowing for both of us. See, what happened was, after spending some time in Osaka the second day, the day of the earthquake, we decided to catch our bullet train to Tokyo where we had a hotel booked for the following night, well, for that night rather. Um, and the time that we caught the train just happened to be minutes, literal minutes after the earthquake struck. So we got on the train, on the bullet train, uh, Shinkansen they call it, and well, we didn't make it to Tokyo. Nah. The train went as far as Kyoto before it stopped and made some announcements in Japanese that well, me and my sister couldn't understand because we don't speak Japanese. Um, so we didn't know what was going on, so we stayed on the train for four hours. Four long, boring hours, not knowing what was going on. Finally, we got off to try and use the payphone on the station. Well, I got off anyway. Um, a man came up to me and asked me if I knew what was happening. And I said, no. Um, and he said, well, the train is not going to be leaving anytime tonight. By, by this point, it was 6.30 or so in the evening. So it was dinner time. The man suggested that we hop off the station and get something to eat. He said that we'd probably be able to sleep on the train because we had nowhere to go now. So that's what we did. We waited in line to get off the station. It was a long, long line <laughs> that took a long time of waiting. But of course, we'd already been waiting for four hours. What was another half an hour? So we finally got off the station and got some dinner. We weren't allowed back into the station to get on the train again. We were not permitted. Um, our tickets had been altered to be good for the next day. So we were stuck in Kyoto not knowing where to stay or what to do. All we could do was run around the hotels trying to find out if anyone had any rooms but no one did. The Japanese people that had heard the announcements and understood them had already snapped up anything that was free, so it was around that point that both of us kind of started breaking out into cries of anguish, not knowing what we could do. We finally got a hold of a payphone that could call um, internationally. We called mum and dad um, <laughs> in tears. Um, we wanted them to contact the Tokyo Hotel to say that um, we couldn't make it, but whether they did or not, I don't know, and we still got charged for that night in the hotel, which we didn't never went to. But in retrospect, it was okay, because as we set out our uh, bags and coats for blankets on the station so that we could sleep that night, a young woman came up to us and asked us if we were going to be sleeping there. We said yes. 
And she said, in broken English, um, no, it's too cold. Uh, you should come with me and, and come to my place. Well, at this point, there was nothing left but to go with her. We didn't, we didn't know who she was. She was a complete stranger. But it was either a nice warm bed or a cold station floor open to the elements. <laughs> so we went with her. She, she um, paid for a taxi for us to go to her house. She gave us this, this um, news sheet in English about the earthquake um, and that it had been you know such a high Richter scale number like 10 or something it said at the time um, and well that that gave us some idea of why the train wasn't going anywhere um, and what the magnitude of this was um, so yeah we got to her house which was a very small house um, with like three rooms um, their living room, we, we sat in there. <laughs> um, okay, there are these tables in Japan that have heating elements inside them and there's a blanket that you put your legs under and, and you get warm. That's, <laughs> that's sort of their version of a heater sort of thing. Um, it's a wonderful, um, except that, you know, my legs went to sleep because <laughs> I'm not used to sitting on the floor. But... Um, yeah, so so there was that, and then we were given some food by her boyfriend who had gone and bought some for us, and we basically just chatted the next few hours. Um, you know, they didn't know English very well, but and we didn't know Japanese at all, so we had some help from Google Translate and various tools, but we um, understood each other um, quite well in the end. And then when it was time for bed, they let us have their bedroom, which was amazing. Like, who would do that? Who, who would find some random vagrants on a train station and invite them, invite them to your house? Like, who would do that? Um, the Japanese continue to astonish me. They're amazing people. Because <laughs> um, I would never do that, to be honest. I would, I would not. Um, so, yeah. Basically, when I was when I was there, I managed to find an unsecured Wi-Fi signal, um, and I managed to finally tweet uh, tweet um, what was going on and that I was okay and everything. Because at this point, news had begun to reach Australia, um, and people were starting to wonder whether we were okay or not. Um, so there was that, and. Um, the next morning, the next morning, um, the woman Miami took us back to the station and, and saw us off to Tokyo. She said that we didn't have to go and if we decided not to go that we could stay with them still and she would show us around Kyoto. That would have been amazing had we not had a tour booked um, that started in Tokyo that very afternoon. So we had to go to Tokyo. Um, fortunately, the tour was still on because it started in Tokyo, but it moved westward, not eastward, which was the danger zone. Um, so it was pretty good. We managed to go on a nice tour where we went to various places such as Hiroshima and Kyoto again, where we actually saw Miami a second time on the station, which was pretty amazing. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd like to see her again, but... Um, so yeah, we we explored Japan. It was good. Um, you know, all this time we were hearing about all the freaky things that were going on with the um, Fukushima nuclear reactor, and it was in Kyoto actually that um, I found out that I had a friend who I knew from Sydney um, that was living in Fukushima Prefecture at the time. She was. Um, teaching English there to some children and um, I saw on Facebook that she had posted that she was um, trying to escape Fukushima which freaked me out um, but fortunately she made it out okay and um, she had a friend who was a taxi driver or something like that 
she made it to Osaka. So I met up with her when the tour reached Osaka, which was the where we were going to be flying back home from. Um, we met up with her and she told us some stories about how, you know, there were so many earthquakes happening where she lived that she couldn't sleep well and like the <laughs> the kids in her class knew what to do when an earthquake struck they got under their desks she had to follow their lead because she didn't know <laughs> um and as well as that when <laughs> when they left well when she and her friend left Fukushima <laughs> they had to have their um clothes decontaminated or something because of the um possible radioactivity of them which was really freaky um so anyway when you know the tour reached Osaka and I met up with her and that was pretty much the last day that we were there um so that's kind of my story um I was quite happy to stay there actually like people at home were trying to tell us to come home because you know radio radiation radioactivity oh my god but um I knew where we were was safe it was a long way from the reactor it was a very long way and it was a long way from any of the tsunami or anything and we only barely felt tremors for the um in the earthquake aftershock tremors basically um it, when we were in Tokyo we kind of there were kind of points where we were unsteady on our feet and we think that was a tremor be because um, there was no other real explanation for it um, <laughs> like it, it kind of felt like being drunk but we hadn't had anything to drink sort of thing it was interesting kind of freaky I had to lean against things um, when the tour just started up I was leaning against things because I didn't feel steady on my feet which was really strange I, I was wondering what was going on but later on it happened to my sister as well so we think it might have been tremors um, anyway that that's my story and I just want to support Japan because they're still rebuilding it was such such an expensive destructive thing that happened um, that is going to take a long time for Japan to properly get back on their feet I'd like to go back to Japan not only to feed their tourism industry but to maybe make some sort of documentary about the disaster and how they've recovered or something I don't know whether I'm going to be able to do that like if I did, I'd have to raise funds, something bad. I'm in debt right now, but, you know, we'll see. I'm, I'm going to a film school, so I should be capable of making a documentary fairly soon. But, um, eh, it's a dream. Well, I don't know whether I bored you or not with that story, but, um, that's... That's my story of the J Japanese disaster from last year. Um, I obviously felt the need to make this video because I was there at the time and I kind of lived through it through watching it on Japanese TV, which <laughs> didn't give me too much actual information, but um, it was ever present during my journey um, through Japan. You couldn't turn on the TV or look at a TV that was playing without seeing something bad <laughs> and it was no good but um, ja Japan's a wonderful place and the people there you know are amazing you should go if you're considering it you should okay well that's pretty much it so see ya